Hey guys, here we go into a video on uh, the mechanics of a punch. Uh, now this is going to be kind of a, a new series um, for my YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to throw these punches, the mechanics of them, uh, some of the ways that they're going to interact with your opponent, these kinds of punches, um, and how to train them. And if you're interested in learning more, in learning how to uh, train and work these techniques on the heavy bag, the double end bag, and your shadow boxing, um, and you're interested in learning and growing, developing how to chain multiple punches or weight transitions together, uh, check out my Patreon. Uh, it's 20 bucks to sign up. It's 20 bucks a month. Um, all my post-fight videos uh, for film study will be going on to my Patreon from now on, uh, including the ones from this card. Um, all three of these fighters, uh, or all three of these fights, uh, were you know pretty decent and interesting and a lot to learn from if you're looking to get better at boxing or learning to train and, and get better at fighting yourself. Um, also, my Patreon will be covering uh, personalized training videos um, that you can send in each month. Um, or each week or each day, um, depending on the structure. Uh, again, it's 20 bucks to sign up, 20 bucks a month. Um, and then the way that the video structure works is you'll upload a video to YouTube, you'll send me a message on Patreon, uh, and whether it's a heavy bag work, shadow boxing, double in bag work, uh, whatever it is that you're working on, uh, or sparring, um, I'm getting a lot of sparring videos, we're working on a lot of fight techniques and sparring uh, training right now, um, but also, um, um, the structure is that uh, each time you want to send in a video, uh, you have to send in three minutes of you jumping rope, okay? Uh, the, it's not just the, the community is not just all you can eat film study for 20 bucks a month. Um, I do actually want people to be getting better and learning to be better fighters. Um, and the goal of the, the, the Patreon is to help teach people to get better and, uh, at fighting. Um, so there will be film studies. There's a lot of film studies. I do film studies there almost every day, um, uh, at least you know three or four times a week. I have you know five six videos a week, uh, sometimes more, uh, depending on how much content I'm getting from the patrons. Um, but um, but yeah, uh, it's very interesting. It's it's a really it's been a very interesting experience so far, and I'm really enjoying it. Um, but anyway, so we're gonna get into the film study, and, and we're gonna be talking about the mechanics of a punch. Um, and what we're going to be looking at are the jabs from the fight. Uh, so Vince is here, like to fight off of the back foot. As you can see, never really crossing the line. Uh, he had a problem getting to the front foot. Um, and that meant that his jab was only going to be one kind of jab, this jab from the back foot, uh, where he's in response, he can jab, or he can jab uh, when you're trying to cross his line. As you can see, his opponent comes forward, leans forward, and is able to attack him. And then the next time his opponent leans forward to get in that position, he's able to jab him and push him off that line. Now, um, again, this is a jab from the back foot. We'll talk a little bit more about it later. I just want to go through the quick jabs. Um, jabbing from the back foot, allowing him to jab and keep his head off the line when his opponent jabs with him in the neutral position. Notice his opponent's head is not off the line. He's basically exactly on the line. But by simply keeping his head on the back foot, he's able to jab with his opponent. Now, I'll talk about the mechanics of this jab as well. Again, not allowing his opponent to cross the line, constantly using this jab from the back foot. Uh, now, he is stepping with it a lot. It's not so bad. He actually had pretty decent rhythm and timing. But you can see by how keeping his head on the back foot when he shoots this jab, he's able to get on the line and then off the line in this position uh, and not be attacked by his opponent's jab. Um, and then also setting up this pull counter very, very easily. Um, here, being able to get off the line of his opponent's jab and then landing his pull counter by crossing the line after. Again, we'll talk a little bit more about that after. The next jab that we're going to be talking about is the neutral jab, okay? Um, now, I think his name was Zepeda. Yeah, his name is on the screen. Uh, Zepeda had an excellent neutral jab. Now, this jab, he's able to use it from a neutral position, not from the front foot or the back foot, but in the middle. And what it allows him to do is to use this jab and get on and off the line with his opponent, boom, controlling that lead hand, that jab, and then make attacks, okay? The key to this jab in the neutral position is not allowing it to compromise your body mechanics so that you can constantly get on and off the line or make attacks. Getting on and off the line to attack or getting off the line to defend, on the line and attack with your shots. 
So the key to this jab is not allowing it to compromise your body, your body mechanics so that you can make the next weight transition after, okay? Notice how quickly he can get on the line with his opponent there and then blast him with that shot. Very quickly, jab and changing positions after he baits his opponent out of position. So notice he uses this jab to control his opponent's line. Now his opponent looks to defend the line by catching that jab and his and Zepeda is able to go around that jab with his left hand uh, because he's able to feint him out of that position with that probing jab, with that neutral position jab. He's able to get him out of position. Um, and again, because he doesn't compromise his body mechanics, right? he's not really putting a lot of weight into this shot. It's just enough to control the space and control the line so that he can get on the line with that jab when he wants to punch with it and then off the line or on the line with that jab when he wants to probe and then attack his opponent when he can push him off the line with it. Again, the key to this jab is being able to is not allowing it to compromise your body body mechanics so that you can easily slide off the line into right hands like this. Boop. As his opponent comes forward, sorry, let me get that one more time. As his opponent comes forward, controlling the lead hand, this is still a jab, right? Using that lead hand to probe and not allowing it to compromise his body mechanics, right? See how his opponent makes a move to get around that lead hand and he's able to counter him with his own right hand? Now it does look like he gets caught with a little bit of a left hook right here, and doesn't land his right hand super cleanly, but the part that I want you to focus on is how this jab doesn't block him from being able to transition his weight either forward or backward uh, for his next weight transition. Again, being able to do this and come forward with that probing jab and line up attacks. Probing jab, push his opponent off the line, doesn't compromise his body mechanics, so he can take this step forward and land another attack. Again, um, at the end of the video, I'll be showing a, a demonstration on, on how to use these jabs or how to, how to use this jab and what the goals are, what the mechanics of that jab are going to be. Now, the last jab we're going to be looking at is the cross, okay? Now, this jab, not this one, this one is going to require you to get on the front foot and then throw a punch and then transition your weight to the back foot. As you can see, um, uh, Mr. Murataya, the preschool teacher, having an excellent technique and excellent positioning throughout his entire fight uh, in what was a really, really impressive performance uh, and very likely the, um, the fight of the night for me. Um, not only did I think that Murataya fought the best of the fights, um, but I also think that Lopez, his opponent, um, fought better than anyone else on the card as well, except for Zepeda. Zepeda was probably on average a little better, um, even though Zepeda and Castaneo, uh, the other guy Castaneda, would beat that guy, Lopez. I thought that Lopez fought a fantastic fight. Uh, he made the fight super entertaining against a guy who was, you know, undefeated. Anyway, if you want more of my post-fight video, uh, that's full video breakdown is on, um, or most of it is on uh, Patreon. Again, it's 20 bucks to sign up, 20 bucks a month. So anyway, he gets on the front foot and he shoots this jab cross from the front foot and transfers his weight to the back foot. Now, this jab, you're going to use, um, you need to get to the front foot first and you want to cross your head over the line here. Now, what he's using this jab to do is to push his opponent off of his front foot. Notice his opponent is trying to get to the front foot here, and he's using that same jab here to meet him on the front foot, boop, and then move off the line. Again, this is going to be a cross, and I'll talk about it a little bit later, um, or a little bit after um, the, the rest of the clips, how to get into position to throw these punches and how to train them. Uh, but see, here he is getting to the front foot here, and as his opponent looks to attack that position, he catches him with that cross and brings his weight to the back foot and moves off the line. Again, baiting that attack from his opponent in this position, boom, and crossing his weight. Now, this is an aggressive punch, okay? The left cross is an aggressive punch, as generally you're going to be transitioning your weight to the front foot and then making an attack and then transitioning your weight back to the back foot to get off the line. Now, as you can see, Lopez trying to get to the front foot and trying to push... Uh, uh, Murataya out of that position, but he's able to cross his line and throw his own counter jab. As you can see, Murataya uh, landing that jab and Lopez eating that cross there. And then he's going to meet his opponent on the line of, on the front foot again here. 
and then use that same punch to cross the line and throw that power shot. Again, this is a power shot, a power jab, okay? And it's very important that you get your weight to the front foot and then cross your weight across the line and throw that shot um, to push your opponent off of the position one and out of that aggressive zone. Again, Lopez did his best in this fight to be a pressure fighter and to attack Murataya, but because uh, uh, Murataya was able to use this cross to push Lopez off the front foot, eventually Murataya was able to alienate him from the front foot enough that Murataya could get to the front foot himself and use punches like this to continue controlling the space against Lopez. Again, getting to the front foot, into that position he would throw the cross in, and then throwing a right hand instead. Now, because he's able to get to the front foot, he's been able to open up this punch for himself as another way to control the space between him and Lopez. This is something that Deontay Wilder needs to work on. This is one of the biggest reasons why he's not able to utilize his power punches as well or effectively as he can because he's never able to get to these positions to open these kinds of um, line controlling punches up. Uh, Wilder likes to throw most of his punches with only power, um, and that's going to be a little one of the, one of the reasons why he's not going to have a right hand like this. Now, um, after that cross has opened up this position and he's able to open up and use these positions to control the space, he will be able to get to that same position. Whoops, <laughs> get to that same position where he's moving to the front foot, and then bait his opponent to slip to the outside, allowing him to throw hooks instead okay so again using the using the cross he's able to push lopez who wants to be aggressive to the back half of his line and then after he's pushed him to the back half of his line he's able to use the right hands to start pushing him to the front half of his line so he can start using left hooks to to counter that positional change as well now it winds up being this whole seamless flowing attack or art of fighting um, as you can see Morataya was a very had a very very successful night in the ring looked very impressive was able to easily transition from the front foot to the back foot throw punches with both hands um, and do everything he wanted to do in the ring now um, as we move back and we start talking about Vences uh, that's the first criticism that I had of Vences in this fight um, and his jab uh, as we see in the, and we get loop back around, Vences never makes an opportunity or makes the, um, makes the, the, how do you say it? The positional change to create the opportunities to set those kinds of shots up. Notice he fought most of the fight on the back foot here, looking to open up and create space from the back foot and not from the front foot to open up more punches. Um, and that's why he was so limited in this fight and very likely why he didn't get the nod um, in spite of the fact that when I watched the fight originally, I thought that he he did win the fight. So now let's talk about mechanically um, how this jab works. So we're going to go ahead and stand up. I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit. So the jab from the back foot, the way this jab is going to work. Now, this is a neutral position here. You can change, uh, and in the, in the video description, guys, there's a video detailing position one, position two, front foot, back foot, and how these punches kind of, or how these positions affect your punches. Um, that video is gonna be in the description, so if you, if you need a second to watch that before you can kind of keep up with what we're talking about, go ahead and check it out uh, before you say some crazy stuff in the comments that makes you look silly and I gotta call you out for it. So, getting on the back foot. The mechanics of this punch and being on the back foot, well, let me demonstrate first. First, the neutral position where you have your hands up where you can block, block, position two, block, position one, block, right? From this neutral position, you can go to the front foot or the back foot. You can utilize your active guard, change positions, rotate your weight, you can move, whatever it is that you wanna be doing, right? But getting to the front foot is a super important part of boxing. However, uh, Vences was not moving, transitioning his weight. Actually, let me turn this a little bit here so I can use the bar behind me as my head. So notice my head here is in this neutral position. Um, the jab that Vences is throwing is from the back foot. So notice my head is off of this line. But this is the line that I'm gonna be attacking, right? So when I throw my jab, straight punch here. I throw my right hand, straight punch here. Both of these punches go to the same neutral zone. 
These punches are used to split your opponent's line, okay? So Ventus is throwing his jab at the same position, but with his head off the line, okay? So when he gets on the line, boom. This is gonna make his opponent's jab, right? The straight jab, boom, boom, or these straight punches, a little more difficult to land without changing positions himself, okay? Now, that was one of the problems that uh, uh, Ventus' opponent had, is that even though he was changing positions or transitioning his weight and moving his head around his opponent, he wasn't changing positions in boxing, okay? He was moving his head around, right? Standing up very straight, trying to move in and do stuff, but he wasn't changing boxing positions, right? He was transitioning his weight, but not changing the mechanics of his body. So what we're gonna talk about are the mechanics of that jab and jabbing from the back foot. So the first part is getting your weight to the back foot, right? Now what this looks like with your feet, and we're only gonna be focusing on the feet here, is one foot is gonna be on the one side of that line, right, the one above my head, and one foot is gonna be on the other side of that line, okay? And now my weight is gonna be able to be distributed from one side of that line to the other, right? As I go front foot, back foot. Now the key to this is having the weight in your heel, okay? This is going to get you into this position and allow you to sink your head onto the back foot. The front foot is gonna be on the ball of your foot. This is gonna allow you to be able to peel from the front foot, so or from the back foot. So if you're here on the line, and you have your hand on the back foot, and your opponent tries to throw a right hand at you, you're already on the back half of your line. You're, there's nowhere really left to slip. So you have to move off the line, right? So having the ball of your foot here, so that if you're fighting on the back half of your line, you can shoot your jab, right? Boom, right? Take that step back, keep your head on the back half of your line, and then take a step back, right? Get to the line and push off. Get to the line, attack, and push off. Um, but the mechanics of this jab are going to be keeping your weight on the back foot here, keeping the weight on the ball of your foot here, not hard, right, where you're pushing constantly to the back foot, but you want your weight on that back foot. Um, and you're always going to want... Get that camera back up. You're always going to want your head on the back foot, but also you're going to want your head on the left side of your opponent's body. So as your opponent is in front of you, you're going to want your head on this side of their head, okay? That's going to be a very, very, very important idea here because the whole reason that this position is going to be effective for you is because you only have to contend with your opponent's jab, their lead hand, uh, uh, without changing positions. If your opponent looks to throw a right hand over your jab, you're much more likely, especially after you've trained and learned positions, to see that punch coming as they have to go from their back back wave two to cross the line. They have to move their head over that line to make that attack. And you'll be much more able to control their head from this back foot position and stop them from crossing the line. Like Zepeda does here, as you can see his opponent coming forward, looking with that jab, coming forward and pushing his head off the line, not allowing him to get into a position to where he can cross the line and throw a power punch, right? Again, keeping his head on the back half of his line also, so that when he comes back to the line, right, or back off the line, he's not on the line if his opponent tries to chase him. Now, again, these are all very fine tactics for this basic jab. But as you evolve and start learning to fight better as a fighter, you'll understand how important it is to be able to jab from this position as well. Because this one is nearly a purely defensive position. Because most of the time, if you're keeping your weight on the back foot here, you're going to be pivoting and pushing your weight backwards, not forwards, right? Because your weight is in your heel on the back foot and on the ball of your front foot. When the ball of your front foot, when you're on the ball of your front foot, your weight is gonna go in that direction. So if you naturally just push, your weight is gonna go behind you. Whereas if you're fighting in a neutral position here, like when we get to Zepeda and uh, uh, Murataya, you're more able, if you're on the ball of your foot, the front foot in this neutral position or here, 
to be able to go forward and push your weight forward through power punches. Um, anyway, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the next set of sequences. Oh, and this, this clip here, the reason why I, I included this one, um, it's also keeping your weight on the back foot is a way, in this clip, it winds up being a way for him to bait the jab out of his opponent. Now notice, when that jab comes from his opponent, where is his opponent's head, right? His opponent's head is on the front foot, okay? So he's reaching with this jab while you're on the back foot, and he's easily able to pull this into a pull counter. Um, and that's one of the benefits of fighting off of the back foot here, is that your weight only has to go forward now. Now you, don't, you no longer have to get here, and make a pull counter, you can more easily bait these shots because you're already in a position where your weight is on the back foot. So there's much less of a transition for this pull counter. Um, however, one of the biggest dangers of being here in this position already is like I said, you don't really have anywhere to go, right? You're already in the most slipped and compromised position that you can. And that means that your opponent will often be able to use jabs against you, uh, very similar to what, ooh, very similar to what Zepeda uses against Castaneda in their fight, which is the neutral jab to bait punches from your opponent. So as we go forward, whoops, why did it go so far back? So as we go forward, Zepeda is able to use those same kinds of punches, um, uh, or a different kind of jab rather, the probing jab, Right? And from the neutral position to get in and out of these positions before his opponent can attack him. As you can see here, using those, those jabs to probe and push Castaneda off of his line. Right Now, Castaneda is on the back half of his line, but he has not changed positions yet. So he's not going to be able to come back with the right hand. Uh, straight right hand. So uh, Zepeda, because he's able to push him off of the line into this compromised position, he's able to easily land this straight left hand to the body because Castaneda is not in a position in which he can actually defend or make an attack uh, because of where his weight winds up being. Um, anyway, moving forward. And again, I'll talk about a little bit about this after, the mechanics of this. But the importance of it, of being able to use these punches, these punches without compromising your weight, is gonna is the reason is it's important is because it's gonna allow you to make the proper motions after your feint or after your probe. So when your opponent reacts the right way or the wrong way or any new way, you're gonna be able to make the correct adjustments, right? Notice as Zepeda continues to control the space and feint him, he's easily and more easily able to push Castaneda off the line. Notice how much differently this attack to the body is than this attack, right? Because as the round goes by and Castaneda finds himself less and less prepared to deal with these probing jabs and positional changes of Zepeda, he has to move off of the line sooner and sooner uh, before those jabs and probes come, which means that these these shots are designed or it's, it, it's in line with the idea that these, these jabs are only designed and only supposed to use to split your opponent's line or change their position. So let's go ahead and talk about the mechanics of this jab. So the last jab we talked about was the defensive jab from position two, right? Your opponent tries to cross your line. They are trying to bring their head from that position to this position to land a right hand here. And you're going to blast them with a the jab, right? Boom, and try to catch them and stop them from being able to bring their weight into you and hit you with the right hand here. Again, it's very dangerous because you have so many less positions to bring your weight to, right? When your opponent throws a, a jab at you, you can catch here, right? Or you can move off the line, right? Catch here, move off the line, right? Catch here, and then you can only bring your weight forward, right? Um, Whereas here, if you're on the line in the neutral position, like Zepeda spends most of his fights, again, I believe that you need to be transitioning through all three of these positions to be successful, just like Morataya does in his fight. Um, but Zepeda shows how you can have success in this neutral zone. So in this neutral zone, you have access to pull counters, being able to probe, move into that defensive zone, and then out of that defensive zone with an attack into the aggressive zone. Um, um, but that is one of the flexibilities you have of being in this neutral zone. 
So when you get on the line with your opponent and you get into punching range, or what I call being on the line, right, which is a position which your opponent can hit you without turning their punches over, right, without having to fully weight transition or change positions and throw a punch, um, they're finding themselves in a position where they can just tap you, right? Either punch, right? Left hand or right hand. And I think my camera's mirrored, so I apologize if you guys are seeing it or you're a little confused. Um, but uh, Zepeda is going to be using these jabs just to split his opponent's line, just to ask him a question, okay? So what he wants to find out is, hey, what are you going to do when I get on the line with you? Right? What are you going to do? Because if you're going to punch me, I want to be able to slip. If you're going to punch me, I want to be able to slip. Right? If you're not going to do anything, I want to punch you. Right? So you want to ask your opponent a question, but you don't want your question to stop you from having answers for your opponent. So it's very important that when you use these punches, not only do you have proper technique and weight distribution so that you can get power in these shots, without having to load up on them, without having to slug, right? Without having to compromise your line, right? So you can get into these neutral positions, get on the line, make an attack, and off the line. On the line, make an attack, off the line. But just have them be quick, real quick snapping shots, right? So the mechanics of these punches and these kinds of jabs are going to be, well, first off, you're going to be in the neutral zone. Notice my head is still above that bar, and as I go forward to meet my opponent on the line, I don't want to go front or back too much, right? Maybe a little bit as I'm crossing their line, right, and fainting them. But if you're not, you just meet them on the line with this probe, you want to ask them a question. So now your opponent meets you on the line, and you ask them a question, and let's say they slip to the front foot here. So now you know that they're going to try to maybe throw a right hand over the top of this jab, right? Or they're going to try to get into this position to throw a left hook. Either way, you know where they're going to go now. So the key to this jab, asking them a question and finding out where they're going to go, is being able to take this position and transition it into this position on the back foot. Notice, very similarly to uh, Vence's jab, when he gets on the line and then off the line with his jab, right? Boom, boom. He's always in this position on the back foot. As, uh, as Zepeda, you want to be able to get here and then boom, move off the line, right? Get to this neutral position, shoot a jab, and move off the line. Get to this neutral position, shoot a jab, and slip to the front foot, right? Get to this neutral position, shoot that jab, and then when your opponent slips to the front foot, you want to catch them with the right hand. When they slip to the back foot, you want to catch them with the right hand. But the key to this jab is not allowing your weight to be attached to this motion so that you can easily tap and change positions really quickly without getting stuck on the line because you put too much effort or power into that attack. So let's talk about mechanically how that's going to work with your feet. Well, again, one foot on the line, or one foot on each side of the line, generally if you're a fighter, that's gonna be your opponent's head, okay? One foot on the left side of their head, one foot on the right side of their head, or vice versa, I guess it's the other way, this is the left side and the right side. Technically, even though left and right is subjective because, anyway, it's not north, south, east, and west, right? So anyway, moving on. <laughs> the mechanics of it, when you take that step forward to meet your opponent on the line, you want to take it with your heel. Boom. Take that step with your heel. Now you're on the line. You can make an attack and push off with the ball of your foot. But it's very important that you go heel, ball, push. One, two, right? One, two, right? These are going to be the motions where you get on the line, neutral, right? Neutral, back foot. Neutral, back foot. Right? So you get on the line with your opponent, neutral, back foot. On the line with your opponent, front foot. Right, But being able to slip and get off the line without compromising your weight with this punch. Right, So again, you've seen the footwork, the way that the footwork works. You want to get your heel in the ground. And now once you're here, 
just like Zepeda, you want to be able to get to this position and then make any motion you can, okay? This is going to be the key to having a successful neutral jab, is that you can shoot this shot and get to any position, right? So you can shoot that shot, slip, and pull counter. You can shoot that shot, slip, and pull counter. You can shoot that shot, slip, and uppercut. Uh, shoot that shot, slip, uppercut, back off the line. But the key is to making sure you can accurately throw that, that punch to wherever you want it and then be able to move positions after. Again, that is the most important criteria for whether or not your line splitting jab is any good. How fast you can get on and off the line with those kinds of attacks. Ooh. Now, the last one that we're going to be looking at is the best one, the cross. Now, this is my favorite jab. This is the jab that you're going to use after you've, able to, you've been able to open a hole in your opponent's, um, in your opponent's guard uh, to allow you to get to the front foot. Now, um, the way that this is going to work, though, oftentimes, especially if you're a new fighter, you're going to have to start creating that space from the back foot. You're going to have to approach the line from the back foot in a very defensive posture and push your opponent off the line. See how he's able to use this jab and push his opponent from that very dominant position on the front foot to this back foot and then move off? The only thing that he's missing is pushing him off the line here and then coming with the right hand as he tries to cross that line here, right? Now that might not have worked out super well because his opponent might have just ducked it and just knocked him out. But the idea remains the same, is that you want to push your opponent off that line and then occupy that space with punches uh, so that they don't move back into it. After you've able to, been able to occupy them and push them off of the front foot here, it'll allow you to get into positions where you can use the the neutral punches to start setting shots up. Now, I do realize that Castaneda is a southpaw, or uh, Zapata is a southpaw and Castaneda is an orthodox fighter, and that may make it look like some of this stuff has changed, but the mechanics still work the same way. Um, they still work the same way. Um, but each of these jabs is gonna help you to isolate your opponent from certain positions so that you can start taking those positions yourself. Okay, so here we go into uh, the cross from Murataya. Whoops. From Murataya. And he's going to get to the front foot here, cross his head over the line, shoot that jab, and then move his weight back across the line. Okay, boom, boom. Front foot, cross, back foot. 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 Okay, so, and then that's gonna open up the opportunity to start threatening your opponent with these punches, right? And then once you can threaten them with those punches, you can threaten them with hooks instead, right? So let's take a look at the mechanics of the cross. So the cross, again, back foot, defensive, neutral, neutral, right? Maybe you're standing in front of your opponent, right? Lomachenko-like. You're like, okay, where are you going? Where are you going? Got to figure it out. Got to figure it out. Got to figure it out, right? Where is he going? Where, you know, figure out where your probes are at. Now, once you've found a way to the front foot, this is generally when you're being more aggressive, okay? So you're going to move forward, and you can threaten your opponent with the right hand, right? So you cross the line, cross the line, cross the line, cross the line, right? Each time you cross the line, you have an opportunity to make an attack against your opponent, okay? So when you cross the line and you throw your shots, you bring your weight back, you can create space. So the cross, if you've managed to find a way to open up a little bit of space here, control your opponent's lead hand, control your opponent's lead hand, slip to the front foot. Now you have to find a way to bring your weight back. And usually, you're gonna do that with the cross. So as you're naturally going through your active guard, catch, jab, catch, jab, and you can open this zone up, you can begin getting to this position and throwing across. So the mechanics of this are going to be, and again, this bar above my head, that's your opponent's head, that's your opponent's line. When they're in a neutral position with you, you're gonna move your head across that line, right? Boop, 
Now my head is on the cross, is across that line. And when I throw my jab, my cross, I need to bring my head across that line and transition my weight from the front foot to the back foot. Boom! Through this punch. And then I'm going to move off the line. So I'm going to allow my hips to go from this, maybe the back foot position to the front foot position, back to the back foot, right? Boom, boom, boom. And that's the cross, okay? The most important parts of this, neutral position, front foot, okay? So I change positions, I allow my hip to turn, I bring my shoulder with me, my weight goes into my front foot, okay? It's in the heel of my front foot, and then when I throw that punch, that bar that I cross my head over, I'm gonna cross my head back over that same bar, that same target, so let's just use a target that's in front of me just so you can see spatially, it's a little bit differently. So I'm gonna cross my head over that same target and I'm gonna attack that target on my way back, right? Boom, boom, and then bring my weight back this way. So front heel, ball of my foot on the front foot, make that attack. And as my weight transitions from here, the weight goes from my heel in the front foot to the ball of my front foot, and then the weight goes from the ball of my front foot to the heel, or the ball of my back foot to the heel of my back foot through one motion. Boom, boom, okay? So let's take a look at that on my feet. Again, neutral zone. One, one foot on the left side, one foot on the right side. One foot on each side of my opponent's head, right? I wanna be able to move around. So now I'm in this neutral position, right? I can go to the back foot, I can go to the front foot, and when I go to the front foot, cross the line, right? Now my weight is in the heel of my front foot, the ball of my back foot, okay? Turn sideways a little bit. This is what my feet look like. My knees should be bent a little bit more to allow my weight to sink in. Um, but the, all the weight is in the ball of my foot and I'm gonna shoot that shot and at the same time I'm gonna bring my head across the line, boom, and throw that punch. And my weight goes from here, right? Here in the heel, here in the ball, to here in the heel, here's the ball, okay? Boom, 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 ba, ba. <laughs> But anyway, that's the mechanic of it. Boom, right? Whack, and you bring your head back across that line, and then peel, follow your weight. Now, again, as a fighter, all three of these jabs are gonna be super important for you. Uh, because they all encapsulate how to attack your opponent's different positions as well. Um, now, this is not all inclusive, everything about the jab uh, or these three jabs, but this is a very, very solid groundwork for you guys to start practicing your weight transitions, your head positions, and what jabs you're throwing. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, Again, if you guys would like any additional tips or ways to practice these on the heavy bag, if you would like help, personalized help of you and your technique alongside your favorite fighters with personalized film studies, check out my Patreon. It's 20 bucks to sign up, 20 bucks a month. Um, and there are hundreds of videos. Um, I think at least 50 videos of, no, nah, maybe not 50. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly how many Patreon videos there are, but there are dozens of patrons uh, with shadow boxing, heavy bag work, some speed bag. I think there's some speed bag, I'm not sure. Um, but lots of shadow boxing, lots of double end bag, lots of heavy bag work, um, all for you to help learn from as well. So if you're a little bit shy and you don't wanna show off your technique or your moves or your whatever's going on, you can still learn from what the other patrons are learning from. Um, but just bear in mind that what they're being asked to work on is gonna be individually important for their development. Uh, so you may have different kinks in your armor, different things that you're good at or not good at, different ways that you transition and work your weight that you may need help with. Um, and if you send me in some drills and training videos, I can help you iron those out uh, to help you so that you can figure out not only how to make these individual weight transitions better, but how you can get to a point where you can start chaining them together and throw multiple punches um, in combination, um, either during the course of one weight transition 
or how to chain multiple weight transitions together um, so that you can fight in combination or fight on and off the line um, and kind of do whatever you want to do in the ring. Um, but my job will be to help you improve your physicality um, and your technique so that you can do whatever you want to do in the, in the, in the ring. Um, anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and again, all my post-fight videos are going to be on Patreon from now on so that people uh, like... You know, people like Hidden Gem can't just steal them all and steal all my viewers and all that shit and all these people who just copy my fucking videos, man. I hate you guys.